Hello and welcome. This is Tales of the Old World and today I wanted to talk a little bit about Old World Hawaii and what it was like before the arrival of the Europeans. So let's get right into it. The story of the Hawaiian Islands is one of pristine, untouched paradise of blue waters, soft sandy beaches, and a very isolated people cut off from the troubles of the western world. Until 1788 when Captain James Cook first found the island, and then in 1898 when it became an official U.S. territory. The story goes that the Polynesian people originating in modern day Taiwan found this island in their small double hull canoes by using celestial navigation and advanced techniques of sailing. They would set out for tiny islands in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean and accurately determine their location by closely studying the way the tides and winds move and then using the stars as landmarks to guide them. These people had no compasses, advanced machinery, wayfinding, or large ships. They didn't need it. They followed the signs given to them by nature and they were extremely successful at finding tiny islands like Easter Island, the Cook Islands, the Samoan Islands, and some even say they made it as far as South America. And there's no reason they couldn't have. Scholars believe it was around the year 500 AD when they finally reached Hawaiian Islands. For perspective, this was a time when Rome had just fallen in Europe, and the entire region of Europe and North Africa and the Middle East were in war and strife. Now, it's believed by experts that nobody inhabited the islands before the Polynesians arrived, but they themselves claim this to be untrue. In the stories of the locals of Hawaii, they speak of a civilization of small dwarf-like people they call the Menahune. They state that these people were great builders and created advanced architecture and canal systems. However, the arrival of the Polynesians forced them inland and eventually into extinction, although some believe them to still be around today. In fact, in the 1820 census, there were 65 individuals who identified themselves as Menahune. The existence of this race of little people is not too far-fetched when you consider something called insular dwarfism. This is a process and condition of large animals evolving or having reduced body size when their population range is limited to a small environment, like on an island. This is very common on islands around the world in cases such as Borneo elephant, the Madagascar dwarf hippo, the Channel Island mammoth, and many more. We actually have confirmed existence of a species of hobbit or dwarf creature known as Homo florensis, and the remains of this creature were found in none other than Indonesia, another home of the Polynesian people. So could the remnant of Homo florensis have sailed to Hawaii long before the native Hawaiians? Maybe these later Polynesian travelers were following stories of the Menahune dating back to the time of Homo florensis. It would be interesting to search for remains and artifacts from the Menahune and see how they match up to Homo florensis bones and artifacts. The natives who first inhabited this island would have found a paradise with very few danger from wildlife and very few pests we're all too comfortable with today, such as rodents and mosquitoes. There were no large animals to hurt them, and there were still small game marine life and some large mammals like, like monk seals to feed them and give them materials for building tools. Hawaii also doesn't experience winter, so those people would have had a perfect island paradise all year round. The only danger would be the occasional tsunami and flooding, but these people were extremely well adapted for surviving these events and creating shelters that would be suited to this sort of extreme weather. The islands also have large mountains capable of sheltering one from incoming tidal waves. These people were by no means primitive or stuck in the Stone Age as some imagine. They had extremely advanced systems of government and religion as well as their own style of architecture, and they even had iron tools. In Captain Cook's journals of his voyage he wrote, the people of Atui, Kauai, swam up to the ships and came aboard. They dismissed the beads and mirrors as useless but were very interested in the iron tools. Plates and earthenware, china cups, and other such things were so new to them that they asked if they were made of wood, but wished to have some that they might carry them to be looked at on shore. They were in some respects naturally well-bred or at least fearful of giving offense, asking where they should sit down, whether they might spit upon the deck, and the like. Some of them repeated a long prayer before they came on board, and others afterwards sang and made motions with their hands such as we had been accustomed to see in the dances of the islands we had visited lately. Cook found that the people of Hawaii to be of middle stature, firmly made with some exceptions, neither remarkable nor of beautiful shape, nor for striking features. He described them as exceedingly friendly to newcomers, but had a tendency to try to steal everything they could get their hands on. Cook reported that both men and women came aboard the ships and favored the crew with their company, but as he hoped to prevent the spread of sexually transmitted diseases, he ordered all female visitors to be excluded from the ships. He also did not allow his crew members on shore until they had cleared a medical check as to quote, prevent the importation of fatal diseases to this land, which I knew some of our men labored under, he said. 
He described the people of Hawaii as, quote, vigorous and active swimmers, leaving their canoes upon most trifling occasions, diving under them and swimming to others, though at a great distance. It was very common to see women with infants at the breast, when the surf was so high they could not land in the canoes, leap overboard, and without endangering their little ones, swim to the shore through a sea that looked dreadful. But Cook was most surprised by their language. He stated, Whatever resemblance we might discover in the general manner of the people of Atui, Kauai, to those in Tahiti, these of course were less striking than the coincidence of their language. Indeed, the language of both places may said to be almost word for word the same. How shall we account for this nation having spread itself so many detached islands, so widely disjoined from each other, in every quarter of the Pacific Ocean? How much further in either direction its colonies reach is not known, but what we know already in consequence of this and our former voyage warrants our pronouncing it to be, though perhaps not the most numerous, certainly by far the most extensive nation on earth. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, check out the one I made on mysterious giant heads of the old world. Many of these come from Southeast Asia and Central America, so it ties into the region the Polynesians inhabited. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button too and like this video for me. Thank you so much.